Hello, Athens County. How are you doing today? Welcome to Lesson 5. Today we will talk about the budget and discuss various ways of finding those precious resources that actually make the project come true. Before we go into creating a budget, let's first figure out what a resource is and what types of resources there are. Resources are the people, things, and supplies that help you implement your project. This includes your team, volunteers, your target audience, time, information, technology, money, equipment, venues, knowledge, and even your great mood. Different types of resources include human resources. This includes you, your team, specialists, experts, volunteers, and other assistants. Everyone who has something to do with the project. Technical resources. This includes equipment, vehicles, facilities, lumber, stationery, props, clothes, any physical objects you will need in the process of implementation. Intellectual resources. This is both your team's and the broader organization's knowledge, experience, technology, methods, ideas, and practices. Information resources. This includes any space which can be used to get and spread information. Media, the internet, television, radio, bulletin boards, etc. Financial resources. Simply put, money. Apart from these categories, there are also internal and external resources. Internal resources are the ones you, your team, and your community already have. External resources are the ones you would need to get from outside of your community. It is important to note that finances only make up one-fifth of the whole project resource base. Money isn't the most important resource when it comes to community development. Your team's main goal is to allocate these resources in a way that makes the project successful and sustainable in the end. We suggest you make a resource table that will help you understand what you already have and what you need to obtain. For starters, let's create five columns. Resource, justification, quantity, source, and how to obtain. Things like wooden planks, volunteers, a venue, experts, paper, etc. would go into the resource column. These are the things you need to obtain. In the justification column, put the reason why you need this particular resource. For instance, I need wood to make a bench, volunteers to conduct research, experts to help in analyzing data, etc. In the quantity column, you should specify how much of that resource you need. For instance, 10 wooden planks each 10 feet long, seven volunteers, one venue per week, 200 paper sheets. The source column will list where you plan to obtain the resources from. For instance, a woodworking station on Main Street, the 4-H group, an arts center, or a community development professional. Don't worry if this column is empty during the first stages. As your project develops, you will adjust and add new information. In the How to Obtain column, write down the conditions you and the source agree to, such as a sponsorship agreement, mutual assistance in event organization, a rental contract, or a mutual promotion. You can also add a column with notes to write down any questions that arise. The purpose of creating a resource table is to understand the scale of your project and analyze which resources you may be able to obtain without spending a dime. Try to follow the rule that spending money is a backup plan and should only happen when you've exhausted all the other alternative options. Are you still wondering what kind of non-monetary resources your community can share? It obviously depends on the project type. Do you remember project types from the introduction? Let's go through the possible shareable community resources and see where they can fit. So, for events, you usually need to have a venue to host the event itself. Instead of looking for money to rent a venue, try to find a partner from your community that can provide you with the space. It can be a local public library, school, coffee shop, an art gallery, a concert hall, or even a brewery. Also, keep in mind that you can look for venues not only in your community, it could be great to organize an event for the entire county at a new place, in Stewart or in Gloucester. 
Shared venues also work for education projects and events. Moreover, if the weather outside is nice, consider community parks and other public spaces. If you are making public art projects or placemaking, you usually need some crafting materials, like pallets, wood, paint, some tools and decorations. Before buying all those things, list them all and try to partner with local stores and even big companies like Sherwin-Williams or Lowe's. Remember that owners and employees of these companies are also part of your community and they too would like to live in a better place. If so, they will try to help you where they can. Ask your neighbors. Maybe they have tools in their homes that they can share or maybe they've recently made a renovation of their backyard or house and have some wood, plants or paint left. When making a project in education, social entrepreneurship or community infrastructure, you have to look more for specialists and professionals who would like to share their knowledge and skills. Remember that intellectual resources are very valuable and having a good volunteer specialist on board can make your project happen.